Hello everybody, my name is Željko Božić and I'm coming from the University of Zagreb. I would like to present our work entitled Fatigue Crack Propagation Simulation in a Total Hip Prothesis Shaft, authored by myself and by my former students Milena Babic and Ozren Veric. Here is the overview. First we have introduction, then we have a reverse engineering procedure based on 3D scanning to obtain the CAD model. Then we have prosthesis finite element model and loading and boundary conditions. After that, fracture mechanics models and analysis and fatigue crack propagation analysis. At the end, we have conclusions. Hip joint is the largest joint in the human body. Sometimes it should be replaced by the total hip prosthesis due to disease or accidents. Hip joint enable movement such as extension and flexion, abduction and adduction, and rotation. Hip joint may be heavily loaded. For example, it can be exposed to load as high as 10 body weights. The resultant force on the hip joint during human walk is 238% of the body weight, according to Bergman et al. Total hip atroplasticity restores normal function of the hip joint. Cement or cement land methods are used to bond, provide a bond between the bone and the prosthesis. Fatigue standard ISO 7206 reduced this prosthesis failure rates. However, fracture of the hip prosthesis femoral component still happens. In the reverse engineering procedure, 3D optical scanner was used. At first, the equipment should be calibrated and the sample should be provided with reference point markers. The specimen was fixed on the rotation table and it was sequentially rotated and scanned. A point cloud in STL format was obtained. CAD model was built based on the point cloud. Loosened femoral component shaft was embedded into cement mantle and bone. Common surfaces were tied together and the base of the assembly was fixed. Material properties of the stainless steel and cement mantle and cortical ball, bone are shown in this table. Based on ISO 7206-4 testing condition, a force of 2300 Newton was applied at 9 degrees in flexion and 10 degrees in adduction. The force acts out of symmetry plane of the prosthesis, which causes torsion along with bending. This slide shows finite element mesh of the hip prosthesis, cement mantle and bone. And here is the assembly model. Second order tetrahedral elements were used. This slide shows results for Mises strength distribution. In the assembly model, we can see that high tensile stress occur on the posterior lateral side of the upper part of the prosthesis femoral shaft. More details about von Mises stress distribution in the shaft we can see in this slide. Maximum tensile stresses occur at this location here and on the opposite side maximum compressive stresses occur. We assume that at this location a T crack can initiate and further propagate. 3D crack is inserted on the posterior lateral side of the upper part of the prosthesis femoral shaft at the location determined and shown on the previous slide. Crack plane is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the femoral component shaft. Here we can see crack front, crank face, and the ligament. In total, six crack depths were considered. In model one, we have a crack depth 2.5 millimeters. Then we have crack depth 3.5 millimeters and 4.5 millimeters, 7.5 millimeters, 9.5 millimeters, and 11.5 millimeters. Shape of the crack front is based on the shape of crack fronts in real cases of prosthesis failure. Here we see finite element mesh along the crack front. There are two parts. In part of 0.2 diameter torus 
along with 30 rows of evenly spaced second order wedge elements are positioned. Around the torus matched with singular elements, a second torus with two millimeters diameter was modeled and meshed with second order hexagonal elements. Mid nodes in singular elements were moved to one quarter of the element length providing singularity for these ML elements. Stress density factor values are calculated along the crack front for five integral contours. K1 values along the crack front for models one to six are obtained as shown in this diagram. We can see that for models one and two, stress density factor values are more or less constant along the crack front. For models three to six, stress density factor values are higher at the crack edges than at the middle of the crack front. It means that ligament at the crack sides is loaded relatively higher compared to the ligament part at the crack center. This means that real crack would propagate in a way that uh, crack is more straight as assumed in our model. After we have calculated stress intensity factor along crack, uh, along crack front for different crack depths, we can proceed to crack propagation simulation. Here we use the Paris model. The Paris model states that crack grow rate dr over dn equals delta k on power m multiplied by cp constant. C and m are Paris constants which are determined experimentally. Delta k is stress density factor range and equals k maximum minus k minimum. Based on the Paris equation, number of cycles needed to propagate a crack from an initial crack length or crack depth A0 to a final crack depth can be calculated by integrating this equation. Normally, the integration is performed numerically. So if we have stress intensity factor values with respect to crack size, crack length or crack depth, the numerical integration of this equation, assuming that we have a linear distribution between the two discrete points, we can calculate fatigue crack propagation life. In our case, for the calculate stress intensity factor values along crack fronts, for different crack depths, we take values at the center of the crack front and plot them with respect to the crack depth. In this way, we obtain a K diagram. By using this procedure explained on the previous slide, by integrating Paris equation and assuming material constant C and M provided with this reference here, we have calculated total fatigue crack grow life for the considered prothesis. It should be emphasized here that this result, result highly depends on C and M constants. Also, total fatigue crack grow life can be influenced by corrosive environment which exists in human body. For a good results, this constant should be determined or taken as accurate as possible. Let me draw conclusions. CAT model of a total hypothesis was obtained by 3D scanning procedure and FEM model was developed. Finite element analysis was performed for loading conditions based on ISO 7206-4 standard. The highest tensile stress appear on the posterior lateral side of the prosthesis, where fatigue cracks appear in real cases of hip prosthesis failure. Stress intensity factor values were calculated along the crack front. Crack propagation in the femoral component shaft was simulated and fatigue life was assessed. In future studies, further effects on fatigue crack grow rates, such as the corrosive environment effect, should be considered. Thank you for your attention.